surface area of pyramids and cones. Okay, so good news is um, the surface area of pyramids, we've actually done quite a lot of that in Math 9, so this first part should be review. And then cones will be a new one, so I'll, I'll show you how that works, but it, it, it's really the same, same idea. All right, so as we go down here, just a couple of terms as we get going here. Um, the apex of a pyramid is just going to be the peak. Uh, the height of the pyramid is always going to be the line from the center of the base up to the peak or up to the apex there, okay? Uh, the base would be considered the bottom, right? Like the, the square or the, the rectangle on the bottom there. And the triangle faces that are going to form, right, would be on the side there. Okay, one that you might not remember is something called a, uh, it's called the slant height of these, of these pyramids. And the slant height, what that's going to refer to is the line that goes from the, the apex down to half, like right in the middle of the triangle there that we're forming. And the reason why that's going to be valuable is because when we find the surface area of these things, if you remember, what we do is we find the surface area of each individual shape, and then we just add them all up in the end. Okay? So this slant height is the one we need then for the height of our triangle, like when we're finding the area of this triangle, because the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or one half base times height, right? So the height in this case is our slant height, right? It's not going to be the height of our triangle, all right? So anyway, so that's called slant height. So this first example kind of gives you um, a bit of a review how you find the area of these things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the, uh, the questions here because we'll go through these as well um, as we answer these. So, so this one says, calculate the surface area of this regular tetrahedron to the nearest... All right, sorry, so this picture uh, wasn't, it didn't uh, print or copy into your notes very well for some reason, so I've added it now. So sorry if you guys have printed this, you might not have this, uh, this picture, um, but if you go back and print it again or look at it again, it should be there. So for now, maybe we can test your art skills and you guys can draw this out if you don't actually have it, so. <laughs> All right, so it says, calculate the surface area of this uh, regular tetrahedron to the nearest uh, square meter. So a tetrahedron um, has the same uh, length all the way around, right? So it would have four equal faces. <clears throat> so really all we got to do here is just figure out the surface area of this triangle, all right? <clears throat> and then there's four that are the same, so we just need to multiply it by four. So let's find the area of this triangle first. So that would just be, well, the area of a triangle, so area is equal to one half, and then it's base times height. So I'll just write BH. So this would be the area is equal to one half times, and then the base here, it's five on this side, so it's also five here. Okay, so our base is five, and then our height is 4.3. All right, so I'll just type in one half or 0.5, either way. So I'll type in one half, so one divided by two uh, times five times five, and then times 4.3. Okay, so that'd be the area for that one face, right? So 10.75. Okay, so the area is equal to 10.75. But just remember, um, we want four of those, right? So we're just gonna multiply that by four now. So that would just be that. And if I just write times, it, it says answer times. And then four, so 43. So, so 43, and then what are our units when we're doing area? So if the lengths were in meters, then our area would be in meters squared. Okay, next one. A right rectangular pyramid has a base diameter, or sorry, has base dimensions. Um, eight inches by 10 inches and a height of six inches. Calculate the surface area of the pyramid to the nearest tenth of a square inch. Okay, so now on this one, you can see what our problem is, right? In the last one, we were given the slant height, right? And that's exactly what we needed when we were solving for the, for the surface area or for the yeah, surface area of that triangle, right? Now we don't have that, right? So we, we actually want 
this, right? We want this height from like here to here, that slant height, okay? And maybe you can, you can start to see what I just did there, like what we're forming. Maybe some of you guys are getting there. Um, what if I fill it in a little bit more? What if I went like this? Do you see how that's a right angle triangle I just formed there? And how long would that red line be if this line, if the height was right to the center of our base? Well, can you see that, well, if this is 10, then the red line there, that must be half of that, right? That's gotta be five. And now we're pretty good to go, right? I've got six inches and five inches to there. And I'm really after that purple line to, to figure out what the height of my triangle is gonna be. So let's solve for that. We know how to do that. That's Pythagorean theorem. So that'll be um, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So in this case, my a and b are gonna be six and five. So this will be six squared plus five squared is equal to c squared. So this is 36 plus 25. Okay, and that's equal to c squared. So this would be 61 is equal to c squared. So then we just need to take the square root of both sides, right? Because I don't want c squared, I want, I want c. So this is the square root, 61 is equal to c. Now you know what? I could type this into my calculator, and if you did, I, just, I think it's worth going through. So if I go square root uh, 61, and then go enter. Well, I get 7.8 and then a bunch of decimals, right? This is a certain type of number. This is actually that, that irrational number, right? So I could type it in, but I t tell you what, if I did, it would be like seven point and maybe I round at the eight or maybe the one or maybe the zero or whatever, right? At some point I'm rounding, which is making my answer less accurate. So what we should do is actually just leave it like the square root of 61. That's the most accurate way to leave my answer, okay? So I'm just gonna say that this is, uh, that purple line is the square root of 61. Perfect. So now I have everything I need, right? So now we can just solve for this, this pretty much the same way we did above. Um, ooh, I kinda lied. Actually, I kinda lied. Um, because this length and this length are different, we're gonna have to do this again too, won't we? Because if I find this purple side, right, that's not the same as this face. Okay, so, and that also won't be the same slant height on the front, right? So I'm gonna have to do this again, but um, yeah, you know what, just to, so we stay on the same train of thought, why don't we use this, right? Why don't we just find these two, this side and the back side for now, okay? So let's do that. So we'll say area, of triangle one, right, that'll be my purple one, is gonna be equal to one half, and then the base in this case is eight, right? Well, you're all right at one half base times height first, base times height, okay? So that's gonna be equal to one half, and then the base is eight, and then my height is the square root of 61. All right, and then, yeah, we'll find that one first. So I'll bring this up, we've got um, one half or 0 0.5, either way, times eight times the square root of 61. Enter, okay, so 31 point yada yada yada, right? So now, um, that's what one face is, right? Can you guys see that, that 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 face would be exactly the same as that face? So we'll just do that. We'll just make that answer times two. And we probably could have done that right off the bat too here, couldn't we? We could have went times two. And then some of you were probably saying, yeah, well, didn't we just like go, well, half times two there? Couldn't we just like cancel those and never have done that? And sure, if you, if you recognize that and wanna do that, then that's fine. You could have said that this was just eight times square root of 61. So I still have to do that. So I'm just gonna go with that answer, right? This was just one half eight times square root 61. I still have to go that times two. So times two equals. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna do now is I, I am gonna write this out. So this would be 62.48, right? 
right? 62.48. And then I'm gonna put a box around that because we're gonna need that in a little bit, okay? And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remember in my calculator where that number was because I'm gonna come back and grab that number um, when I'm adding it up after, because that's like the, that's that's a lot more accurate than this answer is in my uh, my my rounded version there. Okay, so there's my so there's that one. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay, so that's our purple. So now let's do our maybe green, right? So our green, I'm going to find this face and the back face. But in order to do that, I've got to make myself another little triangle. Okay, so if I drew my slant height down to, I can do better than that. A little better. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that triangle that I've made there. It's like a three, like we're kind of looking at it straight on a little bit, so it's a little bit tougher to see sometimes. But that is a right angle triangle in there. And we need the, the hypotenuse on that one. Well, can you guys see what the length of that side right there would be well that's got to be half of this doesn't it so that's got to be four okay so if that's four so now i know the height was six so i can do i can do pythagorean theorem again so now i'm going to say six squared plus four squared is equal to c squared so that's 36 plus 16 is equal to c squared okay so that's going to be 52 is equal to c squared. So c is equal to the square root of 52. Okay, so that's what this face is here. It's going to be the square root of 52. All right, so now we'll do it again. So we're going to say the area of triangle 2, this time just to remind myself what it is, is going to be 1 half base times height and then again, the front face here is the same as the back face, so I'm going to multiply that by 2. And then again, maybe you've noticed that I didn't need to multiply by a half and, and multiply by 2, because those would kind of cancel each other out, wouldn't they? So if you don't want to type that in, don't do it. Okay, <laughs> But I'm just going to leave it there just because that is our general formula, how, we're in, how we do it, right? So anyway, so that's going to be 1 half. And then our base this time, right? Because I'm finding this face, right? So our base is 10. And then our height was that square root of 52. <clears throat> okay, and then times two. Okay. So, all right, I'll, I'll type it all in. You don't need to though, but 0. 0.5 times 10 times the square root, uh, oh, that's not square root. Shoot, 0. 0.5 times 10 times, see if I can get it this time, the square root of 52 uh, times two. Nope. When I put multiply, it was underneath the square root there is what, what the issue was. So times two is equal to. Okay, so that, as a bit of a rounded version for now, is 72.11. Okay, 72.11. And yeah, I'll leave it like that for now. Okay, so those two added together, it's pretty much it. We just have one last, one last simple step. So the very last one, we've got to figure out the area just at the bottom now, right? Because we've, we've done all the lateral area. So the area at the bottom is just going to be base times height. Uh, and then just, that's it. So our last area, I'll call it AB for area of the base, is going to be equal to just uh, base times height, or BH, which is going to be 10 times 8. So 80. All right. So now we could add all these up like the purple, the green, and the black here uh, to get our final answer. But if you're, if you're getting really accurate, and tell you what, like if you put it into the answers in my open math there when you're doing your homework, um, you might be off a little bit. And that, like I said, that's because we rounded it there. You might be off by like um, a decimal or, or two. 
So the best practice here with your calculators, guys, is to go back and grab your answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 80 and then plus. And then with the up uh, key here, you can go back up and grab whatever you want. So that was that one, right? That was at 72. So I'm just going to push enter and that brings it down now with, uh, with all those digits, right? And then I'll go back up and find my other one. So that was the 62.48 one. So this one. Oh, shoot. I gotta push. I gotta push plus. So plus, and then grab that. So enter. Did I do it? Enter. There we go. Yeah, that was weird. Okay. Um, okay. So if you just add all those together now, that would give you. An answer of 214.6 and then inches squared and I think that's what they wanted us to round to or well, no, nearest square inch so that would just be 215 inches squared All right we just rounded that up to five because it's the nearest square inch okay All right, so now we're going to derive a general formula for figuring out um, any right pyramid, okay? Okay, so, um, so if we consider a right pyramid with n sides, so what does that mean? So that just means like in this example, this pyramid had four sides, right? The one above had three. This one's a little weird because the bottom is like it's is the base and then there's one two and then three on the back um but yeah we could do any any pyramid in this in this um with with, with these dimensions so it could have like an octagon base or hexagon base or, or anything like that right um okay so if it has n sides um where each triangular face has base l Okay, and a slant height s, the area a of each triangular face is, well, this is just the formula for um, a triangle, isn't it? One half, and it was really base times height, right? But we've been calling our s, like our slant height, right? And that has been the height of that triangle. Okay, so that's all that is. So now the lateral area, whenever we were doing um, these, these problems, like so if I go back up to, um, let's even say these ones, right? Well, what we did is we found the area of that face and then we multiplied it by four, okay, to find the, the lateral area. So that would be what we're gonna do here as well. So then we're gonna say, um, we're just gonna multiply it by N, right? That's gonna be the number of faces that you have. So if that's like an octagon, then that would be eight instead, okay? Now, now this is pretty much it for the, the uh, lateral area, right? But we can rearrange this a little different. We can put the numbers in a different order we could also say that this is one half times s, right? Just moving the s or in, in the one half to the front, times n times l, and then n times l, if you think about it, is really just going to be the perimeter of the base of any pyramid. So what I mean by that, like if I go back up, this is a good picture here again. N was four in this case, right? And l was eight. That was the length of the bottom of our of our triangle. So four times eight, that would be the perimeter of the bottom, okay? And that would be the same thing with like an octagon or anything else or hexagon or whatever, okay? So that is the perimeter. Okay, so why that's gonna be useful is because we can make our own little formula for these things now, where we can say the, the surface area is gonna be equal to one half times the slant height, right? One half S, and then times the perimeter of the base, right? that'll end up giving you the lateral area. So this part, this part um, here would give you the area, like the lateral area. And then all that would be left to do is just figure out what the area of the base was. Okay, so this actually is on your formula sheet as well. So let's actually look at those two as your formula sheets for a second. So your formulas for these are all right here. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about right here. So for a right pyramid of any kind there, it's one half times the slant height, times the perimeter of the base, plus the area of the base. Or the good old fashioned way that we just did in the example above would be to just piece it all together and find all those individual areas, right? Okay, one little, uh, one little thing to note here. 
this example um, wouldn't work, right? This formula here wouldn't work with the example that we just did right here, would it? Because this base is um, is different, right? Or the, the base for this side is different than the base for this side. So it wouldn't work in that case. Okay, surface area of a right circular cone. So now using the, the formula from above, we can actually apply that to a cone as well, because if, if you think about a cone, what a cone is, right? So if it's got a circular base, and then look something like this, right? Well, what, what you can imagine is that, like in the example above, I was talking about like an octagon, or you could go like, you know, up to, you know, 10 sides, 20 sides, 50 sides, 100 sides, you can keep going, and then a cone, but if you, if you ended up making like, let's say a million sides or a billion sides, it's going to start looking more and more like a circle, isn't it? And that's really what a circle is, is it's actually just a, uh, a polygon with an infinite number of sides. Okay, they would end up making a circle there. So we can think about it the same way. Now, um, the surface area of a right cone may be derived from the... Right, so yeah, anyway. So we can start here and say, okay, the surface area is equal to one half times the slant height times the perimeter of the base plus the area of the base. Okay, well, if we think about it this way, um, the, the perimeter of the base of a cone is really just the circumference of the cone, isn't it? Right, that's what circumference of a circle is. Um, so that, that'll be just two pi r. So instead of having the perimeter of the base, we can say one half times s times two pi r, okay? And then plus the area of the base. Well, the area of the base is just the area of a, of a circle. Okay, so pi r squared. So fill that in. And then if we just clean this up a little bit, we see that we have one half times two going on there. So then that would just be simplified down to pi times rs. Okay, so then in general, for a cone with a slant height s and a base radius of r, um, the surface area formula will be that. Okay, and again, you can see this on your formula sheet. So for a cone, right there. All right, let's do a few. So a cone, sorry, a right cone has a base radius of four meters and a height of 10 meters. Calculate the surface area of this cone in the nearest square meter. So again, for a cone, a good way to draw them is just like an oval and then make a point somewhere above it and then just draw the line down to the side and then down to the side again. Okay, so there's our cone. Um, it says we have a base radius of four, so from the center over is gonna be four meters and then a height of 10 meters. So the height would be from the center up, so it's gonna be 10 meters. Okay, so calculate the surface area of this cone in the nearest square meter. So the surface area for a cone was SA is equal to pi r s plus pi r squared. So then as I'm filling this in, I'm just looking for what I need here, right? So um, do I have r? Yes, my r is four. Okay, so I'm good there. Do I have s? No, I don't, remember? because s is going to be the slant height in this case that would be like the, the height down the side of my cone there right so i'm looking for this one and maybe you guys can see the same little thing that's going to happen here we've just made a right angle triangle there we can find s using uh, pythagorean theorem so let's do that first so i'm going to say s uh yeah so i'll do it this way and say s squared is equal to r squared plus h squared. So instead of a, b, and c, I'm just kind of putting in more appropriate uh, variables for that, right? Because r is my radius, h is my height. Okay, so s squared is equal to, and then r was 4 squared plus 10 squared. So s squared is equal to 16 plus 100, so 116. So s is going to be equal to the square root of 116. And again, I'm just going to leave it that way because that's going to be the most accurate way to put this in. So S 
here, I'll leave it here, was equal to the square root of 1 16. All right, so now all that's left is just to put it in. So we'll say the surface area is equal to pi times the radius of 4 times my slant height, which I now know is the square root of 1 16, and then plus pi times my radius of 4, and then don't forget to square that. Okay. So I'm typing this in, let's see if I can make it a little bigger here. Uh, yeah, good enough for now. Okay, so we'll go, so this will be pi times 4 times, and then the square root of 116. Okay, and you know what I'm going to do just to make sure that I get my order of operations correct? Um, we well, can do it two different ways, right? You can uh, you can type it in like this, but if I go plus and then times and then times again, um, there's a chance that my order of operations might not be quite right. So I'll show you both methods here. So one method is just to push enter right now, and then just save that and then go back up and get the number like we did above, or I'm going to push plus. And then I'm gonna put all of this in brackets so that my, my calculator knows I wanna multiply these guys first and then add it, okay? So this is a good, a good th uh, habit to get into. So I'm gonna go uh, bracket and then pi times r squared. So that would be, yeah, pi times, and then it was four squared, right? So four uh, squared. And then I'll close my bracket. Okay, so that should be good. So it should understand what's going on there. Okay, so 185.6. And it wants it to the nearest, calculate the surface area that's going to the nearest square meter. So I'm just gonna round that up then. That would be the surface area is gonna be equal to 186. And then it was meters squared. A model of the Great Pyramid of Giza is constructed for a museum display. The surface area of the triangular faces is 3,000 square inches. The side length of the base is 50 inches. Determine the height of the model to the nearest uh, tenth of an inch. Okay, so first off, let's sketch this thing out. I'm pretty much Bob Ross here, so there, perfect. Um, there is our Pyramid of Giza, right? So uh, if we're looking at this, what, what are we looking for, right? So it says determine the height of the model. So let's draw that in. So the height of the model would be from the apex to the center there, right? So that's our H. And what is it giving us? So it's, it's given us that the side length of the base is 50 inches. Okay, so this is 50 there and 50. All right, so now let's think about what, what we're after here, right? So it says that the, the surface area of the triangular faces is 3,000 square inches. So that means I don't have to worry about the base, which is kind of nice, right? So here, let's write that down too. So we got the surface area is equal to 3,000 inches squared. All right, so now what are we, we're after this H, right? So I got a feeling that we're gonna have to rearrange this thing to solve for you know H or some variable in this case, but um, to tell you the truth, H, our height of our pyramid, isn't even actually in our surface area formula, is it? So let's actually write down our surface area formula to kind of get a feel for this. So our surface area formula was SA was equal to, and then it was the area, let's say, of, of like one of these triangles would be one half, and then base times height divided by two, right? But I'm gonna call this instead of base, let's call that L, okay? So it's still 50, but let's just give it like a, 
letter for a second. So that'll be my length L, okay? Which is the same as that side, okay? So one half length, so one half times the length, and then really it would be t multiplied by the height of the triangle, which we've been calling S, right? The slant height, okay? So that'd be our like slant height there. And then times uh, four, right? Because there's four sides of that triangle. Okay, so that's what that's what our formula would become, right? Now I'm gonna fill in what I know and maybe simplify this a bit. So this would be the surface area is equal to one half times, and then the length was 50, and then S, and then times four. Okay, so we really just have S to solve for, right? So that wouldn't be so bad though, because if we solve for S, then we're just, you know, one Pythagorean theorem um, uh, calculation away from finding H, because look at this. We've got a right angle triangle there. Okay, so if we find S, then we can use, you know, this length here, which would be 25, wouldn't it? It'd be half of your length. We can use both of those sides of the triangle to find our H. So we're really just after S first, and then we'll use that, okay? So again, let's, uh, let's simplify this down a little bit. So this is the surface area was equal to one half times 50 is uh, 25, right? And then 25 times four. So those three numbers together would end up giving you 100. So 100 S. All right, now I could have done this earlier too. Our surface area was really 3000. So I'm gonna fill that in. So that's 3,000 is equal to 100 S. And then we will just divide both sides by 100. So divide by 100. All right, so that's just 30. So 30 is equal to S. And that makes sense, doesn't it? It's like in the right ballpark with our, uh, with the numbers of 50, right, for our length there. So good, we're in the right ballpark. So that's our S. So now all that's left to do is use a little Pythagorean theorem here. So if I want to find h, okay, so it's going to be h squared is equal to, but now this time it won't be um, s squared plus, here, and I'll call that x, just to give it a variable here. Whoop, what happened there? So I'll call that, yeah, x, okay? So this time it's not gonna be x squared plus s squared, right? Because we have the hypotenuse, right? So it's gotta be s squared minus x squared, okay? Minus this length here, right? All right, so filling that in, we got h squared is equal to, and then s we just figured out was 30 squared minus, and then x squared, like we said, this is half of 50, isn't it? So this would be 25 squared. So 25 squared. So here, you know what? Let's just let's just plug it in. So I'm going to say h is equal to the square root of all that. So let's plug that into our calculator. Okay. So we've got. What did they say that was? 30 squared. Yeah. Okay. So 30 squared. Uh, minus 25 squared. Okay, and then I could I could have written the square root of all that first, but here I'll just say equals, and then I'll take the square root of that. So then I'll go second uh, root, and then I can either grab it from above, or you can push second and then answer down at the bottom there, and it grabs my answer from above. So just grab that, and that's equal to 16. Point Six. Sixteen point six, and it says determine the height of the mile to the nearest, yeah, tenth of an inch. So that would be tenth of an inch there. So height would be sixteen point six, and this was in. Uh, they gave us square inches, and they gave us fifty inches. So this is inches as well. So it's okay that my picture wasn't very good. I made this thing really a high pyramid, didn't I? So that wouldn't really be the case, right? This would be kind of like a lower slope pyramid which which does make more sense in the end doesn't it so okay so that's it